Hola, bienvenidos a mi canal. Hi everyone, welcome. It's your girl Daniela, aka the Witch Doctor PhD, here at your service. I'm going to try to be dramatic every entrance. Maybe I should like turn around. Be like, Hola, is that too much? But welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you so much for coming in and saying hi. So I used to do book looks back on my old channel, my Danny Bo channel. I used to do book looks. I did a couple of them. I think I have a playlist on my channel if you're interested in seeing them. I only did a few. But the whole idea of a book look was to do a makeup look, get ready with me style, based off a book I had just finished reading. I found it was a good way to like play around with makeup, explore different styles, and also talk about something else I was interested in besides makeup, which are books, which is reading, which is literature. And that's another thing that you'll find on my new channel, is book videos. I love the booktube community here on YouTube. I'm a big bookworm. I just love reading, I love books, and I love makeup. So I thought this was a good way to like combine two of my interests and just have fun. So the book that inspired today's book look video is the book Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a relatively recent release. YouTube was where I first heard about this book. And normally I'm not the type of person that reads literature that is just put out. I tend to like read things that are old. But when I saw this book, I was so compelled by it. Number one, because right away I knew it had to do with Mexico, with it had Mexican characters in it. I'm Mexican and a lot of the times I feel like I don't see my culture or my nationality. Well, like I'm United States citizen, but I have like Mexican lineage. So I always consider myself Mexican, which is interesting because people in Mexico don't consider me Mexican. They consider me American, which is hilarious because I don't feel so American. I feel very Mexican but over and I'm perceived as Mexican here in the States, but to like actual Mexicans from Mexico, like they don't think I'm Mexican. My abuelita, whenever I go visit my um, mom's family in Mexico, we're from Querétaro, she's always like, why do you like think you're Mexican? And I'm like, I feel Mexican. And she's like, you're not Mexican, mija, you're like American. And I'm like, but I'm both. Like, but anyways, it was exciting to hear people talk about something that was so like blatantly Mexican and so I felt like I had to read it. And Mexican Gothic, like I could tell right away it was about something about Mexico and also something like spooky. And reading a spooky Halloween book is on my like fall bucket list, so I thought this would be perfect to um to like check off that bucket list item and it looked fun you know like normally i don't really go for this type of novel this type of literature but i do enjoy me like a good like fast paced you know more of like a poppy type of novel like i consider this to be like pop like if literature was music this would be a pop song i am almost finished with my glass of wine that i started when i first filmed or when I began filming so if I seem like off the walls like bouncing off the walls it's because I am drinking a Pinot Noir right now but anyways I was inspired to read this from watching a lot of people's videos on booktube and I picked it up at the Barnes and Nobles I read it as part of my book club that I had with my best friend in Austin Texas Miss Gracia Arellano did I love it honestly no I didn't love it and the reason why I didn't love it is because like honestly I felt like it was just a little bit it was like a pop song okay it was a pop song it was fast-paced and catchy and compelling and fun but did it change my worldview? Did it like knock my socks off? Did it like sweep me off my feet with its beautiful 
compelling vision and language no it didn't there was like some things that was like super predictable you know and like sometimes cliche here and there but overall i enjoyed it i had fun with it so that's that but it is set in 1950s mexico it revolves around the main character miss noemi taboada she is a socialite she is from a wealthy family she goes to parties on the weekend and she smokes cigarettes and she likes fancy party dresses and she likes being a flirty little spicy little mama i can relate I'm not mad at that. But anyways, so Naomi has a cousin who lives out in the countryside. She just got married. And this cousin one day writes a very distressing letter to Naomi's father, basically asking Naomi's father to come save her from some crazy circumstance that is going on out in the countryside where she is with her newly married husband. So he sends Noemi to the countryside just to see what's going on. And Noemi ends up falling into this entire like craziness of what's going on at the mansion, which is called High Place, by the way. There's a lot amiss, a lot going on, and Noemi ends up staying longer and longer trying to get to the bottom of it, and she eventually does, and it's a wild ride. So Noemi's cousin, the one that is in the countryside and asking for help, her name is Catalina, and she married an Englishman named Virgil. Virgil or Virgil, I don't know. But she married this Englishman, Virgil, and Virgil has a dad who also lives at the mansion. And the dad's name is Howard. And there's also like a nephew called Francis and uh, his mom called Florence. Noemi is basically the only Mexican in the mansion and everyone else is English. And the father of the groom, Howard Doyle, is like a, he is a white supremacist slash eugenicist slash he keeps on talking about inferior and superior races he like obviously thinks that um, englishmen white people are superior races and indigenous mexicans like noemi are inferior races and he always goes on about like how different her like dark skin is and all that and yeah it's 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 something else um yeah, it's, it's interesting, it's interesting. But I am really happy that like Noemi is described as like being more dark-skinned about having indigenous heritage and I really resonate with that. I love seeing a woman of color, I love seeing a woman who is like tied to her indigenous heritage and her roots and like is seen, visibly seen as that that really like touched my heart so for the book look for this video i decided to go inspired by the book cover and the era in which this was written so this was written in the 1950s in mexico and so i did some research just a little bit of uh, like what makeup was like in the 1950s and I came up with this look that you see here. And I also was inspired by the book cover, her deep, deep burgundy lip and her cheek and highlight colors. So if you're interested in seeing how I came up with this look here, keep on watching and I hope you enjoy the transformation. Hi, hello, welcome to my bare face. To start this off, I have a glass of Pinot Noir for my delight. It's Saturday afternoon, Biden has just been declared the next president. Cheers! Ugh, I had to go take away Bugs' toy from him because he kept on playing with it and it kept on making noise and squeaking. I felt like the world's meanest mom taking away his toy. He's actually here now, he came to see what was going on. I loved the cover of this book. Honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why I was drawn to read this. As soon as I saw the cover, I was like, I need to know what's going on with this woman. I checked out some like articles about what makeup was popular in 1950s in Mexico, and I will link all the links that I looked at down below in case you're interested. But it seemed like 1950s Mexico was characterized by a deep, bold lip, thick brows, winged eyeliner, not too much eyeshadow. So that was my inspiration for this look. Let's get into it. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is 
using my Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer. Get at those little imperfections and blemishes I have on my face just to give me like a flawless canvas to work my magic on. With my Beauty Blender, I'm just going to um, blend that contour concealer in and then I'm going to take my L'Oreal Infallible Foundation, the Pro Glow. I have it in the shade Caramel Beige and this is starting to be a little too deep for me. We're heading in- Ah! I just dripped some on the carpet. No. It has been so incredibly hot in the last couple of days. It has not felt like fall at all. Literally, today was the first day I felt like it was fall. I'm just gonna set everything with my Makeup Revolution Banana Setting Powder. The label has faded off of this completely, but I have so much of this left. And I'm gonna take my Fenty uh, powder brush and just it feels good to put on makeup. I haven't done my makeup in this entire week just because with the pandemic, I work from home. Um, this week I haven't had a lot of meetings and so I just haven't really been doing my makeup. I'm sure it, everyone feels the same. For blush, so in on the book cover, it looks like she has like more of a warm blush. So I ended up uh, grabbing this MAC uh, Trip the Light Fantastic Powder. Technically, I guess it's not a blush, it's a fantastic powder, whatever that means. This is from the Star Trek collection that MAC came out with a couple of years ago, and this is like a, a reddish, glowy shade because it looks like what she's wearing on the cover is like a reddish glowy type of powder. I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. brush, swirl it into my powder and just, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I used these fantastic uh, Trip the Light powders. What are they called again? Trip the Light Fantastic Powder. Whatever that means, Mac. And then for highlighter, so the blush has a little bit of a glow, but I kind of want to emphasize the glow, so I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezi highlighter, just to give me that like extra oomph. It doesn't seem like they were super glowy in the 1950s, but I'm again going off of the book cover and she is pretty glowy right there. Do you see that? She has like a shine to her cheek. Okay, finally we are at the eyes. And for the eyes, like I said, I'm not going to do too much with them because from the 1950s makeup that I saw, it seemed like they just did a simple eye with some cat liner. I do want to put like some kind of definition into my eye though. So I'm just going to go in with some neutrals to just define the crease very softly. I chose the Too Faced Chocolate Bar for this because it has like a really nice range of neutrals. I am gonna go into this like beige shade right here. I threw away the um, the sheet that came with this palette. I remember when I was obsessed with knowing the shade names for every single palette I owned and it's still pretty nice to know that I suppose but it's I am not that level anymore that I need to like hoard a plastic sheet in my palette. It's enough for me that it's the, sh the shade. It's like a beigey shade. I'm gonna get into that and I'm gonna just uh, put that all over my lid. Oh, a thing that I have been loving is this um, edgy shadow switch brush cleaner. There's various of these on the market. I got mine off like a, you know, knockoff unknown brand called Edgy Beauty from TJ Maxx. It's just like one of those like sponges or like textured material things where you um, like clean your brush on when you switch in between shadow. I have been loving that thing. I always kind of like was interested in one of those things and I finally like bought one once the like knockoff ones came out on TJ Maxx and I have been loving it. So I am going to go into this 
this shade right here. It's like a cool toned medium matte brown and I'm just gonna dip into it and just define my crease a little bit. I'm not trying to do anything with it besides like define it just a little bit. And then I'm going to do that really iconic 1950s can I using my roller liner eyeliner from Benefit. I used to be a boss at doing winged eyeliner. I could do one like super easy. I was pro and ever since I stopped doing liquid eyeliner and I dropped off the face of the earth and I didn't focus on my makeup, my skill level deteriorated. OMG, this is so hard. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. And I feel like this one is a little bit more down and this one's a little bit more like winged, but I haven't done my winged eyeliner in like months. So I'm happy that I can even do it <laughs> and that I don't have to wipe it all off and start again because I have been there, I have done that, trust me. One thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go in with a little pencil brush and I'm going to go into this shade right here which is a little bit deeper of a matte brown. I'm just going to line my bottom uh, eye just in order to give it a little bit of definition to balance out like that heavy black I have going on on the top of my eye. It's been a while since I've used the chocolate bar from Too Faced. I remember when this came out, it was so iconic. I got the chocolate bar, I got the semi-sweet, I got the bonbons, and I got the sweet peach. I have four of these type of palettes from Too Faced. I got rid of the bonbons, but I still have the chocolate bar and the semi-sweet and the peach, as well as the gingerbread spice. I, I really like Too Faced. Too Faced is one of my favorite brands. Okay, and then I'm going to do brows, my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in dark brown. And from what I could tell, the 1950s were about the thick brows. It was a departure from like the 1920s, 1930s, where they had that pencil thin brow. I'm glad that I'm not doing a look from that era because I have thick brows naturally and it would be hard for me to do a pencil thin brow. So I'm just going to really fill in my brows. I'm going to emphasize their fullness here. Lashes, I have here the Maybelline Lash Sensational. I got this at a TJ Maxx a couple of weeks back. I got rid of my really old mascara that I had been using. I think it was the Too Faced Better Than Sex. This is the Lash Sensational. It's the full fan effect. I didn't even realize that Lash Sensational had come out with like a full fan effect style. I remember when this first came out, I don't think it was called full fan effect, was it? 1950s lashes didn't seem like extraordinary one way or the other. Like mascara, that was it. It's so interesting how makeup like evolves and changes over the years. Like a few years back, I remember the Instagram baddie look, you know, that was it. And I feel like now we're going into more of like a uh, French minimalist, glossier, jouet aesthetic. Okay, and the last thing is the lips. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Do you see her deep, deep blackberry lip she has going on? I have the perfect lip for that. The Urban Decay Matte Blackmail. Whew. The last thing I'm gonna do, I sh probably should have done this before I put my lipstick on, but I'm going to use my Real Techniques Blush Crush like Kabuki brush to blend out um, my cheeks. And I think we are done. We are finished, the complete look. I can't believe this took me 41 minutes to film. I'm gonna have to edit that down to like 20. See, my hair is short like hers, so this works out. I'm happy. My hair has always been super long my whole life. I just barely cut it like um, five months ago. I guess it's not barely. 
This is my 1940s look. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've read a Mexican Gothic. Um, let me know if you plan on reading it after this book look. Thank you once again for tuning in, for spending some of your very valuable time here on my channel with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate your energy. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Besos!